Thanks everyone for coming out. Um, I'm going to start the, the night with the, the video that was made by my friend Ron. And uh, then I'm going to get that started from there. And uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> April 8th, it is an anti-war protest, a part of a national call out to end all wars of U.S. aggression at home and abroad. I started off with about 70 people. You know, every stop we would have a little speak out and we had banners and we marched through the streets. And then we ended off the protest at the financial district and in front of M&T Bank. We were about to be over with when uh, M&T asked us to leave off this, the edge of where um, their property is, which is public. And during the day, people eat lunch in there all the time. Uh, but clearly because of who we were and what message we had, they didn't like that. We were causing any way harm, and then the police came. The one officer came and he said, this rally is over now because I said so. We get down from the wall and see Russo comes around with his handcuffs out, with his, uh, ready to arrest somebody. Um, at this point, we're off, <laughs> we're off the wall and uh, Russo is coming around and now he's here ready to fight. The other officer is telling them, let's go home, this is over, they're off the wall. But they're not into that. He's into like agitating the crowd. This is where Officer Russo comes through the crowd. If you notice in his right hand, he has a taser in his hand pointing it at us. And uh, you can't really see, but I'm getting tackled from behind here by an officer from the other side of the road from the uh, terrorism task force. So I'm being dragged up here on the wall. Uh, here I'm being hit with a billy club. And, uh, it's over. I'm about to get arrested. You can see the officer in the back, he's picking up uh, his pepper spray off his belt. I'm, I'm completely detained. I'm not moving. And he comes up from behind and he sprays me right in the face with a mace. Just a show of force. Like, we don't care if you're watching us. We don't care if you're videotaping us. We doesn't matter. We're not going to get in trouble for what we do. We can act any way we want. They, they said we decided to ride. Nothing was broken. No police officers were hurt. The only person who was uh, hurt was me. I was maced, clubbed, tackled. They criminalized people who are saying things that they don't like. And they don't ever go after real criminals. MNT Bank received $600 million in bailout funds and paid none of it back. And they also are a large conglomerate that invests in lots of different war activities. They're basically material support, aid for all the wars that are going on. And, uh, you know, that's terrorism. Right. They charged me with five misdemeanors, inciting riot, rioting, unlawful assembly, obstruction of governmental procedure, resisting arrest, five counts of disorderly conduct, and uh, trespassing. And then they told me in the back of the squad car, they wished that the whole situation would have got out of hand, that he would have been able to shoot me in my head. And uh, the other officer looked back at me and said I would have slept like a baby. If I would have threatened their life, I would be in jail right now. You know, if I would have pepper sprayed them, I'd be in jail right now. There's no repercussions for anything that they say because they're the ones with the guns, they're the ones with the billy clubs, and they can walk on the street, they can brutalize people, and there's no repercussions for them at all. Even if it's on videotape, even if they murder someone, they still get away with this kind of stuff. Unless people, you know, have the strength to, to exercise their freedom and their power. No, 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 Thank you so much for all the support I've received, and uh, thanks to all my fans and my family, and I know everybody here is that, and um, and uh, so yeah, 
thanks to my co-defendants, my lawyers, and all the ancestors that came before us that uh, we have the freedoms we do have today. Um, I'll begin tonight's talk with a quote from Malcolm X, which I will intersperse throughout the entire talk. Um, it says, I'm not a politician. I'm not even a student of politics. In fact, I'm not a student of much of anything. I'm not a Democrat, nor am I a Republican, nor do I even consider myself an American. Uh, the main points of what I'm going to talk about tonight are the following. The structure and design of our society are not happenstance, they're not random occurrence, uh, that they're designed, created in a very deliberate way. The system is not broken, it's actually working exactly the way it's supposed to for those who set it up and for those who run it, and not for the planet and not for us, but the, for the select minority who run up on top of it. Um, again, in the words of Malcolm X, when he's putting the rope around your neck, you saying, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. But the whole time they've been doing it, they've been experts at it. They know what they're doing. How the most important battle is in our minds. It doesn't end there, but that's where it begins, and that's where we're currently in chains. We didn't get there voluntarily, though now as adults, it is comfortable, and we actually choose to stay ignorant or blind, and we've been misinformed, misguided, miseducated, deliberately undereducated and misled. And we are not to blame, but we are responsible for this. And a quote from Harriet Tubman says, I freed a thousand slaves. I could have freed a thousand more if they have, would have known they were slaves. So that's like back when they were in shackles, and we're not in that. And it's the same mindset, though, uh, that we as a people work against our self-interest, that we're unaware of our importance and our power, and that power is in our hands, and the power of the society is in ours. The wealth is our wealth, that we fight their wars, we mine their military, or we, we mine their minerals, we build the prisons, we fill the prisons, we police ourselves, we fix the roads, we collect their taxes, we vote, giving consent to be governed by criminals. We are the think tanks, we invent for their wealth, we miseducate ourselves, we run the machines, and we buy their crap. All this works collectively against our own self-interest and the interest of life on the planet. Uh, to keep the existing order of the rule of few over the majority of us, the 1%, the 99, the haves and the haves not, um, the wealth is accumulated in the pocket of a fraction, and to keep this powerful, they use legitimacy, like in our minds. They use persuasion, moral pressure, incentive measures, and when that doesn't work, they use force, police, violence, the military. It's about in that order, but they would prefer not to use force if they don't have to. Yeah, them being capitalists, they don't, it costs a lot of money to have police, it costs, and it also sparks rebellion and it shows the true nature of the, who they are. Uh, for example, when Willie Lynch was a person who spoke about how to train slaves from England, on his way to give a speech in America, he said, on my way here I saw slaves hanging from the trees. And I want to say that that's not a, that, that's a, it works against your self-interest. He's talking to the other slave owners. He said, it's much better to have slaves fight against each other because you paid for that slave and that slave was making you money. And that also breeds rebellion and it breeds resentment. It's much better to pit the young against the old, the white against the black, the darker against the lighter, the women against the men, and let that control the slaves. And um, that you matter, you're real important, your actions and impact shape the world. And also to stop identifying ourselves and our minds with the oppression, with the oppressor, and uh, that we're not the system even though we do run it. Um, a few things to clarify right off the bat. I request people, don't take things personal. If you begin to get triggered or something I said, uh, just relax. Because no thinking takes place when we're in a fight or flight or like when we're, if we're in fear mode. This is how the media pumps us full of fearful images on a constant basis so that we're constantly distracted, we constantly have to work, and we're not actually thinking. I also request that people don't make things right or wrong. Don't make the police wrong, don't make me right. Don't make me wrong and make them right, because it doesn't actually have any effect in the actual world. Whether I'm right or whether they're wrong, it doesn't matter. I've spent years of my life making <laughs> the rich really wrong and making other people right, but it doesn't have any effect to the actual results I want to produce. Um, I ask people don't feel guilty or bad about what's going on in the world, because that also doesn't help. Or even feeling good, all these things, um, you know, I'm trying to like have us to be able to objectively look at how we as a people are creating the world we're living in, separate ourselves from actions enough for us to be possible for change. Not get stuck in, well, oh, I'm an American, or I'm a Democrat, or I'm a Republican, or I'm a police officer, or 
I'm a liberal. No, you're a human being, and we're all living in this place together. So if your identity <laughs> hasn't brought you or us far enough as it has today, I think we need to forget those anyway and start to be able to look at things more objectively so we can recreate the way we live on this planet. And um, my personal belief is justice, equality, freedom, and all aspects of social, economic, political for all people, regardless of that person's nationality, race, sex, religion, sexual orientation, culture. All people in this room, everyone on this planet, I believe people have the right to self-determination, right to self-defense. These are my personal beliefs and what I stand for stems from a deep love and respect for people in this room and for the planet and for life in general. So, the police's role and function in this current society is to protect and serve the law and order of the society. The order of this society is controlled by the super rich, prioritizing profit over life. Irregardless of the class of the certain police officer, or whether that police officer is a good or a bad person, I'm not talking about personal police officers here or individuals, that's what I'm trying to separate this from. It's actually their function and overall role in society is still constant no matter who they are as an individual. And their function is, in order is, is to protect the order of the society. And that order is uh, inherently to protect the wealthy. Um, I want to engage everyone in exercise, so I ask people to make their answers brief.